The Radio Forest Podcast. Hey, what's up? It's Wesley. Hey, Wes, how are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? Good. You're coming May 14th, Stoney's Roadhouse. How's the touring been after, you know, a little bit of a shutdown and probably a big change to your life and getting off the road for a little while with COVID and all the lockdowns? Yeah, everybody's in the same boat, man. Now, how is it being back on the road, I mean, after that time off? It's, uh, you know, refresh and, uh, you know, you know, build your core back up, so... Physically awesome. Hey, I wanted to talk a little bit about your illustrious soccer career. I heard that you were actually pretty good and uh, had a good chance at, at maybe go play in Europe or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it was a little dicey up and down, you know, but yeah, we were, uh, we were having a good time playing a lot of ball. Was that in Kansas City that? Was that like AYSO? Was that youth? Was that like traveling team? What happened? No, nah, it's soccer room, man. Soccer Dome, KC, uh, PD, man. Awesome. Yeah, I actually tried out for the Kansas City Wizards when I lived in Kansas years and years and years ago. You know, of course, sporting Kansas City now. Yeah. Did you make it or what? No, and I wasn't good enough to make it, but they held open tryouts. Throw my hat in the ring for my dream job. But it was a great time. It was cool. That's cool. Yeah, I love you, dude, for real. Did you ever happen to run into Rod Stewart? Because I know that he was a pretty good soccer player, and I know you guys have sort of a little connection. But he didn't boo me, but um, he meant the dude's, in, you know, the guy is legendary. I mean, he's like, you know, his vocal, you know, his, his freaking cadence and everything about this guy is just, like, amazing. <laughs> you say you did or you did not cross paths? Um, I have never really crossed paths with Rod, but... I respect him and I love him and he hired me and it's, you know, hey, you know, I'm not the only one, you know. Yeah, I guess he could have been like a professional soccer player or a singer and he had said, hey, I can't drink and smoke and play, play soccer, so I'm going to be a singer. <laughs> well, my hat's off to him too, man. You got your new album, Welcome to Galvania, out now. I think a couple of the songs were co-written. How many other people did you work with on this album? Or are these all Wes originals? No, collaboration uh, with uh, many different writers. Um, you know, you know, it's uh, it, it's cool. It, it, it's I love it right now. So you're cutting out a lot to get like every third word. You said there's quite a bit of collaboration on the album. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really good to actually uh, work with uh, different writers and stuff, you know? You can all bounce each other's ideas off each other and stuff. It's really cool, actually. You've worked with other songwriters before. I know back in the album Famous, you worked with the guys from Eve 6. Did you work with those guys, or did they just submit a song to you and then you recorded it? No, they were in the studio. I was doing, like, four songs, you know, like, simultaneously over a course of, like, uh, two weeks. So they came in there, like, um, you know, and said, like, hey, man, you know, sing this. So, you know, they, you know, constructed me to <laughs> sing it exactly the way that, you know, they had written it. So, yeah. So, but it's just a song, you know, really cool. Have you talked to them since after the album was released? Because I know it was on the radio, and I think it did pretty good in New Zealand. Did you guys ever touch base after the song had already been out? Yeah, I ran into him in the airports and everything, man. And, you know, we're all just like, you know, sitting pretty and, you know, we're just happy with the outcome of the entire, uh, the entire, you know, the, the entire song. We were all like, you know, we were stoked that it's, uh, it's been like this, this uh, absorbed. And what was it like pulling in Josh Freeze on the album Come Clean? I mean, that dude's worked with everybody from Guns N' Roses and The Offspring. He's done it all. Well, Josh Breeze is uh, a masterpiece. There's no percussionist that can, like, even get near him. Yeah, he's just, like, he's, like, an incredibly freaking amazing dude, man. Do you give people feedback since it is your band? If you've got someone like Josh Freeze on drums, are they playing what you write? Or are you sort of like, hey, give me some drums for this song. Yeah, that sounds good. Or if you're like, dude, whatever Josh Freeze comes with, that's what we're going with? Yeah, exactly. Whatever Josh, you know, brings. Uh, you might as well just get down on your knees and just go, hallelujah. I think you're a little underrated. I think people tend to forget there's not a lot of front men that also are writing and playing guitar. If you look at some massive bands like the Rolling Stones and Pearl Jam, we forget those lead singers, Eddie Vedder and Mick. They can play guitar, but they don't on stage. But you're singing, playing, and songwriting, and I just think sometimes people forget how few bands 
have that role of a guy that's the front man, the guitar player. Is it challenging or is that just the skills you happen to have as a musician? That's just the, you know, that's the way I was just, you know, raised up, you know? So, you know, everybody always says, just keep writing, you know, that's, that's pretty freaking good to write another one. So that's what I do. I just write songs and, uh, and, uh, you know, let everybody listen to it. And, uh, you know, it's going to freaking, uh, you know, hit a chord inside of your head. I wanted to throw out some of the bands that you covered, and you just give me what comes to your mind about either meeting the band, listening to band as a musician, before you were a musician. When I hear these bands, I've got an image of my head. So I just want to throw some of the ones from Rediscovered, and you tell me about these artists that you covered. Sure. Rolling Stones. Thank you very, very much, Mick Jagger, for your simplicity. It was wonderful to sing. It was like nice and smooth and easy, you know. He knows how to, like, you know, have fun and not have to, like, out, go out of control and whatever. Okay. Yes. What about Tom Petty? God rest his soul. I love him. And uh, that was uh, amazing, you know, to sing that song. It's amazing. I'm listing all artists that are off of Wes's 2011 Rediscovered album. How about Joe Walsh? That dude has a high voice, man. <laughs> Is that hard to cover? Uh, no, but you got to get, you know, prepared. <laughs> it's fun once you get there, but it's like, you know, you got to get down. So what about ACDC then? Is that kind of along the same lines with getting that voice? Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, everybody's got their own, you know, voice style. Um, and I appreciate every one of them and I've learned so much from all of them. If I can even get there, it's fun. <laughs> go back to kansas real quick did you ever run into danny carey from tool i know he's a lawrence guy i've never ever even um ran into that cat i was sitting on the side of the stage with greg upchurch who's um uh, three doors down we were sitting on the side of the stage and <laughs> when i used to smoke i lit a cigarette up a maynard was like drenched in black paint looking at me like he wanted to <laughs> make me go die or something and i was like ah what was it like then jamming with Jimmy Page and Fred on stage in 2001? It was just you three on stage, and you're playing Zeppelin, man. Amazing. Like, that's just crazy. Look at my right leg. I'm, like, shivering. But it was amazing. It was totally amazing. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Badass. Did you already know how to play that song? Did you have to practice? Did you get together and practice I, with him and Fred? Uh, yeah, we all got in this room. I actually was rehearsing it for like, uh, you know, a few days, like profusely. And then, you know, we went over to the, it was the European Music Awards. We did do a little rehearsal and it just ended up being pretty badass. So, I mean, you know, what are you going to say, man? Hell yeah. How do you get a ski cap to fit your head so well? If I wear a ski cap and my hair's a little bit longer, 10 minutes later, that hat is lifting off my head. But when I see you, you are the best wearer of ski caps forever. They never move. Is it, <laughs> is it the way your head's designed? Do you buy good hats? You know what? <laughs> uh, yes, I was blessed by the skull gods. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, they're, they're cool. But you got to make sure you're cool with them. So maybe I'm getting the wrong skull size. God, skull cat. All right. Last question. Can you please talk me through how Wes Scantlin ends up, I believe twice with a BB gun at an airport and, and then gets in trouble. Talk me through what happens and how you end up in that situation. I want to say one thing. Hell hath no fury. A woman's and many women's scorned. <laughs> Did they plant a BB gun on you? Planted. It was planted. <laughs> totally. All right. Welcome to Galvania is out now. May 14th, West and Puddle of Mud, Stoney's Roadhouse in Emmett. <laughs> He's got the best skull in the world. He's played with Led Zeppelin. Wes, thank you so much for talking to me today, man. Thank you very, very much, buddy. Chill.